मेरा रंग दे मेरा रंग दे बसंती चोला माए रंग दे मेरा रंग दे three or four points before before we conclude this this meeting but i'd like to say at the beginning unlike debra i find india far from being boring a most interesting subject uh, and the more you explore it the more interesting it becomes and and i think its boredom can only come from treating with uh, sorry to say that debra disdain a very large section of the world's population and a large section of the world's territory i said i'm giving interesting yeah and it's 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 it's, it's, not, it's not a boring place I used to think India was a boring place before I left India. I didn't really discover the interesting part of India and 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 what it had to offer in every field till I actually left left the country and it was through um learning a lot about it that I I I I became converted to this new one but that's by the by we can carry on that sometimes privately it's not um, very important. Although Indian and Pakistani freedom if you like is attributed to uh, Gandhi and Jinnah it's my confirmed belief and it may upset the followers of Gandhi and of Jinnah that these two, two gujaratis are the chief architects of the misfortune of the people of the indian subcontinent mm. they they've literally destroyed a, 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 a india and pakistan there's nothing in pakistan that you would want to have if you were a muslim and there's nothing in india that really is that wonderful as a result of gandhi there was a very great revolutionary movement within within the national liberation movement it did not succeed in put imposing its program on the on the rest of the movement and it's a measure of a of the cleverness and the ability of british imperialism to divide and rule over indians that they could actually involve them in this <coughs> dispute with each other between hindus and muslims um etc and also of course to a certain extent it is the failure of a the nationalist movement yes. and b of the communist movement to respond to it properly poverty in itself does not equal revolution russia was not the only poor country in europe at the time when the british empire was at its height and the sun did not set on it eight nine year children were being worked to death in factories mines and textile mills that poverty did not produce 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 a revolution so poverty and revolution do not equate leadership is exceptionally important russians proved up to the task because the bolsheviks provided the revolution nary movement with the leadership without which there is no question of the bolshevik revolution is nothing automatic about revolution is nothing inevitable it's inevitable in the end but it's not inevitable that it will take place on a certain day during a certain period of time since you got me involved in this this topic which i didn't really want to discuss there are differences between india and china one of the major differences between india and china is the second world war yes in the second world war china is fighting against the fascist powers one of them japan as a result of fighting against the fascist powers it not only will get the support of the soviet union directly it will also get the support of the united states while they were fighting against against japan and in doing so they were, the chinese communist party was able to mobilize the peasantry when chiang kai shek relented on that fight and turned on the communists the chinese communists were able to say we do not want to fight against each other we want to fight against the foreign invaders we can sort it each other out later let's fight the japanese and expel them and in doing so they became the hegemon of the chinese revolutionary movement against imperialism in a way that bhagat singh and gadrights and others did not manage to do so because during the second world war the slogan of the indian communist party rightly was defeat of nazism and victory of the soviet union the compromising indian bourgeoisie which had always shied away from revolutionary struggle during that period of time gives the slogan quit india it became more important than the communists the communists are collaborating with the british government to achieve soviet victory which is not wrong but in the eyes of people you know to indians there were no greater and more harmful fascists than the british rulers 
they almost enjoyed Hitler's victories against Britain. You know, you had to be there to, to, to realize that. And, 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 and that was one opportunity lost. Then when Soviet victory was achieved, the communists were still popular. They had a lot, lot of following. The, there were revolts in the Indian Royal Indian Air Force, Royal Indian Navy, and Royal Armed Forces. And when they rose up, the Secretary General of the Indian Communist Party, P.C. Joshi, sent them to Gandhi to talk to them. Instead of saying, yeah, we mobilize these people and we'll become the hegemon of the revolution. The communists made a lot of mistakes. Uh, that's one very, very important factor. Chinese, secondly, the Chinese Communist Party, whatever Chiang Kai-shek did, is the inheritor to a revolutionary Kuomintang led by Dr. Sun Yat-sen. So they carried a very long revolutionary tradition, which was not pacifist, which was revolutionary. Sun Yat-sen led his armies in battlefield and overthrew the last uh, Ch Chinese emperor. He died. He wanted to have close relations with so so Soviet Russia. He died. And then as soon as the nationalist forces had reached Hankar, they came to an agreement with the British and turned on the communists again. And, and killed the communists. And this, was, this, this enraged the Chinese, that here are these people who are fighting against foreign aggressors, who are fighting for the liberation of the, of the peasantry, and Chiang Kai-shek is tur turning on them, so Chinese communists. And of course, there's no question about it. The leadership of Mao Zedong is absolutely brilliant. You know, leaders do matter. It's not that here is a clever Chinese and is a stupid Indian. It's not like that. The whole program of the Communist Party of China. Although a lot of Maoists tried to actually cause fissures between Stalin's Russia and, and Maoist China and say, well, you know, Ma, Stalin gave wrong advice and the, and the Chinese simply spurned that advice and followed their own line. The truth of the matter is Chinese carried out faithfully Stalin's writings on the Chinese, Chinese Revolution, which were correct, which was a correct, correct analysis. So the Chinese were very, very good. and and and. They succeeded, and the communist movement failed on that one. In the 60s, there was a chance for the communists to make a revolution. There was poverty, and the communists were rising. But then the Naxalites who come, what's their program? No, only one form of struggle they recognize, and that's guerrilla warfare. They do not recognize any form of other struggle. No women's movement, no student movement, no nothing. Only the armed struggle they, they recognize. Secondly. They want to follow the Chinese example of capturing the cities from the countryside. India is not China. Yeah. You cannot transplant the Chinese revolution to an end. They even went further. In a petty bourgeois country, you do not do that. They even put as a forward slogan, China's chairman is our chairman. Hmm. You can recognize the theoretical contribution of Chairman Mao like you will do with Lenin. But nobody sane would say, Britain's chairman is Lenin, or Britain's chairman is, is Stalin. So a number of things were, 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 were done. Uh, there's really not time to go into, in, in, into it thoroughly. And every time I open my mouth, I physically risk my, my, my personal safety, because there are followers of Maoist line who would, instead of arguing intelligently and discussing it, would, would just be into throwing, 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 throwing brick, brick pads. So there are sev several reasons. Um, it's a subject which actually needs further exploration than I have ever indulged in. So I do not claim to be an expert why there was no, no, no revolution any more than I can explain to you why did capitalism develop in Britain rather than elsewhere first. You know, 